Hey, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. Um, this is our Foundry VTT uh, series we're looking at. Um, but we've had a question posed by Paul Francis um, in our comment section that says he's thinking about using Foundry. Um, obviously, you know, we're looking at that at the moment, um, but he doesn't want to use the tokens for Foundry because they prefer, they play face to face and they prefer to use miniatures. Uh, and his query is really about how you can do that um, and really merge those two methods. It's not something I personally have any experience with doing. Um, I, I'm a traditional face-to-face -face player, um, but like a lot of people, struggle to find games and have moved over to uh, virtual games and using VTTs instead. Um, but I've never tried the blended. I've always, if it's face-to-face, -face, it's pen and paper, old school. Um, not really used any digital support for it in those instances. Uh, so it's a really interesting question and something worth having a look at. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in this video, um, probably quite a short one. Um, so first of all, I think one of the big challenges with, uh, with, with doing that and merging the two is that Foundry is very token oriented. So if you want to use miniatures and not use tokens, uh, it's, going to make a, it's going to make things quite challenging for how you use the maps. So the DM screen, regardless of what we do with the lighting levels, we can make it as dark as we want. Uh, this map, by the way, is from um, from a Van Delver uh, campaign, which is something we will be building in Foundry. I'm in my test world at the moment where I just play with a few things. Even if we make this really dark, obviously the DM can always see this. So we don't want to share this with the players because they can always see it. So we're definitely going to need to have a separate screen that gives the player view that hides all of the, the DM tokens and, and anything like that that you would want on there, the comments. Um, and things um, or otherwise the map's going to be while it's dark it's going to be visible all the time to all of the um, you know to all of the players which is a bit rubbish but if we're logged in as a player if we don't have a token on the map we're not going to be able to see it unless that map is done in a way like for example if I pop to the sword coast here unless it's a map done like this in which case all of it is brightly lit, in which case, yes, the players can see everything. Now, on here for Fandelva, I've got some of these locations that um, that I've put on here as map pins. These map pins are currently hidden from the players. So the player version, they can't see those map pins. Um, and as they discover those, I will update these um, so that the player version of the player's view can see those map pins once they find out the location of Cragmore Castle, once they learn about Thunder Tree, once they learn about Old Owl Well, etc. So I can do that from a map point of view. That's that's really not a big deal. But I have to have the whole thing revealed. So when we do something like the Cragmore Hideout, pop over to this one, it means they would be able to see this whole map. So really what um, what Paul's question was about was about the use of fog of war, because understandably what he's thinking um, and the way that you'd want to do that is to have all of this covered by fog of war and only reveal parts of it as the players approach different parts of the map. So with fog of war, uh, reset again the DM can see everything the player not necessarily if we uh, we select one of these characters down here um, then uh, we can't see all those rooms but the player view that we would need the to have on this other screen for the players to see well they can only see what the tokens can see so we have to have a token on there to represent the party um, and the fog of war is linked directly to that I I'm if we're looking under here and there may be an add-on that does this but I've not encountered one I've not specifically looked for it um, but you've either got fog of war on or you haven't um, it doesn't matter whether we've got how bright it is but we've either got fog of war reset or it's not so we need a token to reveal fog of war which kind of defeats Paul's whole idea of using uh, using miniatures and not using this so I, I would I would suggest that um, using it in a way that you're using it to display maps and information and stuff absolutely fine um, but actually using it for exploration maps I'm not sure that's going to work at all um, not in the not without also having to have tokens on and the tokens explore you know even if we hide that we can hide the token 
Okay, so the DM can hide the token so it doesn't show on the player's one. Um, and, you know, as the... Let's just make sure that, that light's up again. Because uh, obviously this is a cave, so it's quite dark on my screen here. Um, so the DM potentially can go, oh, okay, well, as your party moves up there and can reveal in that kind of way. Um, but again, it's linked to that vision of that um, token rather than anything else. So is it doable? Yes, it is. Is it elegant? I'm, I'm not sure it is. My combat music in the background there for uh, the encounter with Clark. Um, and of course, once places have been explored, the fog of war stays off. Um, and, you know, from what Paul said, um, he's not going to have these monster tokens on there because so, he's going to um, be placing those on. Uh, I'm not sure that that is a, a nice solution to, to Paul's challenge of trying to mix the two. Um, what I would also say is if you're, if you're thinking about, if you want to be able to use the maps for combat maps, but with figures, obviously that's not going to work cause, unless you're going to, you know, blue tack or super glue your figures to your screen. So in that instance, if I wanted to do that, my first thought would be, well, hang on a minute, I want a flat screen that's laying down so they're looking down on top, literally looking down on top of the screen that is flat on the floor or on the table. Um, and that's starting to get complicated. Um, I think it could be really good. So they literally are looking down on the map and they can place their physical figures on the on the screen. Um, you know, a bit of glass over it to protect the screen or whatever you want to do. Um, but actually have your physical figures instead of these tokens and place them on there and you could move it around. That seems like quite a bit of extra work though. Um, but it doesn't get around this problem of needing a token to reveal Fog of War. But I think there's possibly a slightly better solution to, to Paul's problem that isn't Foundry. Um, because Foundry Fog of War doesn't work in a way that to me seems conducive. So um, another one we haven't looked at yet, but we are, well, I was planning to at some point anyway, um, is taking a look at the Beyond VTT, which is a free extension for the Chrome browser that integrates directly um, with Beyond, uh, with D&D Beyond. Uh, and you can use that for running adventures. So if I just drag this over here, um, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is a, it's, obviously it's a different map, but it's the same area that we were just looking at, except this is in VT. Uh, sorry, in um, beyond above VTT, uh, we can do the same encounter. What is different about this? It's a free version. It's really good, and I run games using this at the moment while I'm still learning Foundry. I don't want to throw my players into Foundry until I'm comfortable. It's going to give them all of those things. So this is basic, but really good really um you know it's free absolutely free of charge as well which is great and a reason why it might be a better solution for paul rather than paying out for foundry and then not using half of those things um because if you're not using tokens then you're not using the spell effects and, and all of those bits and bobs as well uh, so we still got the map we still got the the issue with you know potentially having a screen laid flat so we can put our figures onto the grid uh, and obviously you'd want to resize the map to make sure it kind of you know, the, the squares matched your, your figures. So you still got that challenge. But the Fog of War works differently here. So with, this is the DM map. Um, I've got a token on here. So we, this is the only, let's get rid of these other player tokens. We don't need those for the moment. Um, and you can see that we've we, we run an adventure in here. There's lots of corpses all over the place. So I've got, just down here, I've got a player character token, but I've hidden it. So it's invisible. With this, what I can do is I can have global lighting on so the players can see everything. I've got vision turned off so the players can see the entire map except where it's hidden under fog of war. So if I go up to my fog uh, and I hide, I can do hide all actually and hide all of the fog of war here. Okay, and I'm just going to bring over what the character can see. Hang on, let me just make sure I'm not... Uh, sharing stuff with you that's not of use uh, that's what the character can see nothing because they're in fog of war now let me see if I can uh, let me see if I can side by side these two uh, which isn't great um, but we can side by side these uh, we'll hide that 
Okay, so as the DM, I can see the whole map, but I can use this fog tool, uh, and you can see I can hide, not just hide everything, but I can actually hide the whole lot or particular sections, but I can also reveal. So what I could choose to do is say, well, actually, I can reveal the bit that you can see. Uh, and get rid of that. So the, this is the player's view on the right-hand side here. Um, regardless, you can't see the token, but I can just choose to reveal whatever bits of the map that I want, can't do it, uh, whichever bits of the map I want the players to be able to see. So this might be a better solution. Uh, are they going to look, they look in the right side, yep, oh they can see, you know, again, we're not going to have the wolf token on there because Paul's going to want to use his physical figures for it, but he can reveal that map as the DM as they explore and it stays explored. Uh, just from Matt's comments, it wasn't a huge comment, obviously he hasn't explained everything and every detail, but I think this is probably what he was aiming for uh, and wanting something like this so you can just reveal the map as they go. Uh, let's assume they, they do a right up here um, and they can head across the top uh, and then eventually they get to a bridge where they can see down and realise that that connects. Um, if we make a mistake, we can just go back and uh, oh, hang on a minute. You know, you didn't you, you didn't go that far. I can hide that again, no problem. And you can do that in the shapes as well. So I can do a I can do a circle there and reveal that room as a circle. Um, polygons, if I want to be quite precise about what I'm revealing, I can do it like that. Okay, so uh, I can go around corners and things like that, and I can also do bucket fill. <laughs> if I want to, uh, not going to do that. Uh, or I can just reveal all. Ta -da. So the right side again is the player's view. Um, we can hide that player token. Uh, we can reveal the map as we want to. And I suspect that is the solution that Paul is after. Um, I don't know how to make to do that in Foundry VTT because you don't have those fine fog controls unless there's an add-on that does it. Um, but again, if if I was running it the way that, that Paul suggests he is, using figures, I would be wanting to have a big flat screen laid down so they can literally put that, instead of tokens, they're literally putting their figures onto that screen and can move around. I think that would be a really nice juxtaposition um, of the digital maps with the actual using figures and you get that kind of crossover but that requires some setup that requires a fair bit of effort it kind of suggests that you need a permanent gaming space um, which most people aren't fortunate enough to have their own gaming dungeon or you know games room and things like that so I just thought I'd show you this um, and hopefully it gives Paul some ideas of how he might be able to go forward and get the results he wants um, without uh, you know without spending out loads of money and spending time practicing to find it's not the right solution so again, uh, this is above VTT. It is a free um, add-on to the Chrome browser, and it integrates directly with the Beyond D&D uh, &D Beyond. So again, it pulls all your character information through if you want to. Uh, so if I look on the right-hand side, I've got this up the top right. I've got the word sheet. This is my D&D &D Beyond character sheet for this character. I can do dice rolls from here, just like we can. So if I click this, it's gonna roll my dice for me. Um, so I, you can use it for your dice rolls if you want to. But of course, Paul might not want to. He might want pen and paper and that stuff and just use the digital map stuff. So you don't need to use it, but you can. So you could use this as well if you want to. Uh, and any updates you make here, directly update to Beyond D&D uh, &D Beyond as well, which is really, really good. So. That might be a halfway solution, and it's a free solution, which is often very, very useful. Um, I hope this has been helpful. If anybody, if anybody out there is doing something similar to Paul and using actual figures themselves, like you know, real figures, like back in the old days, um, and using it with Foundry, it would be really useful if you could leave a comment on this video and let us know how you're doing it, what tools you are using, um, if there's an add-on for that fog challenge that you've got. Um, and we'll see if we can help Paul out and uh, get his game running the way that he wants, uh, as easy as possible and most successfully. Uh, thanks for your time. I hope this has been useful. 
uh, to not just Paul but other people as well and we will do a video on creating adventures using Beyond VTT this system uh, fairly shortly just for those people who want to be able to compare VTTs and decide which is going to be best for them. Thank you very much. Take care.